Origen primarily bases himself in Paul and what Paul has to say about these things. For example, in On First Principles, he looks at, in particular, uh, the way that Paul used Deuteronomy uh, 25.4 to basically tell us, or, or well, who, who he was speaking to at that time, but, but also us as well, that these odd things that we find in the Old Testament are written for us. So in explaining Paul's use of scripture, Origen says this, and this is in On First Principles, he says, then explaining this precept, he adds, is it for the ox that God is concerned? Or does he speak altogether for our sake? It was written for our sake, so that he who plows ought to plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope of partaking. And most of the interpretations in circulation being adapted to the multitude and edifying those unable to understand the higher meanings have somewhat the same character. So he bases his allegorical interpretation of scripture on what Paul is doing. Um, Paul uses the word allegory um, when he's talking about Sarah and Hagar in another place. And I think that's important to understand just how prominent the allegorical interpretation of scripture was back then in relation to certain things like the violence in the Old Testament, um, some things that seem a little bit odd in the, in the Old Testament, uh, but also certain things in the New Testament as well. And I don't think that's focused on as much. Gregory of Nyssa, both he and Origen, as well as Basil and Maximus, uh, in particular, thought that the Holy Spirit put stumbling blocks, uh, is what they called them, um, scandala, uh, in the texts of Scripture. Uh, and this was in order to direct the reader to a more divine meaning of the particular passage. So these stumbling blocks would be contradictions or troubling depictions of God, uh, those types of things. And they thought that uh, the Holy Spirit has, has purposely inserted these things into Scripture. Gregory of Nyssa, he says that uh, this, and when he says this, he's talking about discerning a meaning worthy of God in Scripture, doing this. Uh, he says it applies not only to the words of the Old Covenant, but also to the greater part of the Gospel teaching. Okay, and then the things he mentions here are interesting. Uh, the winnowing fork that clears the threshing floor, the chaff being blown away, the wheat remaining at the feet of the winnower, and then he says, the unquenchable fire. Okay. Uh, the good granary, the fertile tree of the wicked, the threat of the axe that terrifyingly exhibits its sharp edge to the tree beforehand, the stones being altered to human nature. So when we look at the things in the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, um, that they tended to interpret allegorically. Uh, those were things like the violence in the Old Testament, um, because those were troubling depictions of God. Um, but for the New Testament, uh, the things that Gregory of Nyssa mentions in this passage, pretty much all of them have to do with uh, Scripture's depiction of hell, New the New Testament depiction of, of, of hell, of Gehenna, particularly the unquenchable fire. So I think a lot of people, when they think of allegorical interpretation or sp the spiritual interpretation of scripture, are mainly thinking of uh, the interpretation of just the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament um, that Origen or, or Gregory of Nyssa gave. Um, but it does apply to certain parts of the New Testament as well. I think probably the most scandalous thing that Origen says in regard to the violence in the Old Testament, particularly in books like Joshua, um, and this is where we get this statement, is his homilies, is one of his homilies on Joshua. He says that, quote, unless the physical wars bore the figure of spiritual wars, I do not think the books of Jewish history would ever have been handed down by the apostles to the disciples of Christ who came to teach peace so that they could be read in the churches. So this is a really, uh, really radical statement that he makes here that unless these passages of violence in the Old Testament 
uh, Joshua Gregory of Nyssa talks about the killing of the firstborn um, in exactly this same way, the killing of the firstborn in, in the book of Exodus, that if these were not interpreted um, spiritually, if these were not interpreted allegorically by the apostles themselves, then they would have never even included these books. The, well, these books would never be have been read um, in the churches. And what, what it means for a book to be read in the churches back then is today what we would probably say um, it means for a book to be part of the biblical canon. So, yeah, I mean, he's saying that we wouldn't really even know um, anything about these particular Old Testament books if the apostles did not see that these should be interpreted allegorically because if taken literally, Origen thinks that it's just too at odds with what we see from Christ in the New Testament. What Origen did and what uh, we find a lot of the early church fathers doing like I said, Gregory of Nyssa definitely with uh, the killing of the firstborn, um, is they saw the violence in the Old Testament, um, especially when it was its most violent, um, when, you know, Yahweh is commanding um, the murder of women and children. Um, they saw those as primarily being about uh, killing our own passions or uh, you know, demons before they grow up. They, before they grow up and get too big for us and we can't handle them. So Origen would say, in particular with Joshua, that, well, in Greek, Joshua and Jesus are, are, are the same. Right? So he kind of liked that and would say that Christ leads us uh, in battle against our enemies who are allegorically represented by, in Joshua, the Canaanites, and that we need to completely wipe out those enemies, our passions, our, our lusts, uh, greed, you know, those types of things. We need to completely wipe them out when we see any hint of them whatsoever so that uh, they don't become so big in our own lives that we really can't deal with them at all. Which, it definitely does stay, I think, with within a close correspondence to what is going on in the Old Testament. If we look at what is commanded of Saul in 1 Samuel 15, for example, where Saul's commanded to kill all the women and children, everything, right? And Saul doesn't do this, he spares the Amalekite king, right? and uh, Yahweh is upset, right? God is very upset at this, that someone was spared. So Samuel took it upon himself to kill this king, and it said that uh, he hacked the king to pieces. Right? So I think that Origen and Gregory of Nyssa take this absolutely seriously, that these commands by God are indeed given and intended to be taken in their totality, right? because you do have some smart evangelicals saying that these should only be uh, interpreted as hyperbole, right? That uh, we killed all the women and children, kind of the equivalent of saying something like, uh, you know, in a, in a basketball game, if you, if you won by a whole lot of points, uh, saying we slaughtered the other team. Um, they would, I think Paul Copan would say something like, that's the equivalent of what's going on here. First Samuel 15 doesn't quite make sense of that, because God gets mad when some, when one person is spared. And Origen and Gregory of Nyssa, in particular, take that seriously, that this is what God commanded, and say to us that we need to take that seriously in the allegorical sense of we need to take care of our, our passions um, before they get too big for us. And Christ, as Joshua, Jesus and Joshua, um, will lead us in battle against those. I, and I want to stress that so it doesn't sound like some sort of Pelagianism or something. You know, Christ is the leader that destroys these in us. So that's mainly, I think, what, what Origen and Gregory of Nyssa uh, did with the violence in the Old Testament.